I am excited to bring back this week's guest, who is, I have learned, one of the favorites. No, 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 Scott. You are the favorite <laughs> guest that I have had on. You're not the best looking, but you are the, the favorite guest true, by our listeners. <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah, hey, Scott Briscoe, uh, welcome back to the podcast. So, you know, I was wondering, this is my third time now, my third time, or is this when I get the uh, debriefing jacket? <laughs> this is it is coming to you with your patch, uh, so it'll be good to go. You can wear it with pride. <laughs> you know what? We got to do that. We have got to hand out some kind of present to people who show up on our podcast. I assume Joe Rogan sends out gifts. Wouldn't you think Joe Rogan does that? You would imagine so. Yeah. And, and I- we can start the club. I, I, well, you can start with me. How's that sound? Now, I don't have Joe Rogan's budget, but uh, <laughs> I have been to Colorado, so I can pick up some of that stuff that they use. I was just kidding, Mom. Don't, <laughs> no one, you know, uh, write me any kind of hate and nasty notes. But nonetheless, yeah, did you actually follow that podcast with Joe Rogan uh, where he had uh, uh, Elon Tusk? Is that, is that his name? The, the Elon owner? Elon Tusk. Yeah. Yeah, the billionaire. Did you hear about that podcast? I heard the the snippets and the bits and the pieces. Was this the one where he was encouraging, was it the the parents, I guess, uh, to get high? Was that the one? And they got high during the podcast. So apparently it's called Joe Rogan Experience for a reason. You actually experience something. Uh, We are not going to do that on my podcast. I can pretty much tell you that right now. (laughs) Unless it's for medicinal purposes. If it's for medicinal purposes, then maybe I'll get my doctor friend on there. He'll say how it's it's good. I don't know. I'm way out of my league here right now. Scott, (laughs) it is great to have you back on. Bring some order back to this podcast. Because I... Now, Scott, we are now... Not best friends, but I, I I follow you on Facebook, so I feel like I am your friend because I am stalking you on Facebook. So you got to tell me how your life is because I know you got a new dog. I got a new dog. Um, I, I got to pay tribute to my girl Lucy. Uh, that that was a heart wrenching story, dude. It was rough. She was she was my my little soulmate. She was a stray that just wandered into my yard out of nowhere. Really? Just yeah. Uh, full-blooded Springer Spaniel. Okay. And she was roughly a, about a year old. Okay. And it, it took me about a week or two to tame her enough um, to even bring her into the house. And once she stepped foot in the house, it was over. She was, All right. it, it was her house. So I had her for about 16 years. And uh, it was just about a month ago, a little over a month ago that she, um, she disappeared out of my yard. And I'm convinced she, she was sleeping 20 hours a day. Right. Right. And, uh, only getting up just to eat and, and to go to the bathroom. So I think to save me the heartbreak, she got up and wandered away uh, like older dogs do to, to pass away uh, peacefully. That's what I'm telling myself anyway. So hey, that is good. Now uh, for my yeah. wife, I have a black lab. That's pretty much, you just described her. She, I think maybe passed away a couple of years ago. We just don't know it yet. Uh, and so for my yeah. wife's, I think for mother's day, she actually wanted th- my dog's ashes. Wanted me to cremate my dog and hand it to her, but I wasn't going to do that. I am just kidding. She didn't actually ask for that. <laughs> I, I think I'm just kidding, but nonetheless, I, your story was heart wrenching. Uh, cause you, you had this dog, wonderful dog, Lucy, uh, and, and so, um, and you went on the hunt for her. You looked for hey. her for several days. I followed hey. that on Facebook. All my friends, neighbors, they came out with the ATVs, the motorcycles, the drones. Um, even the friends that when I was not home, I didn't know it, but friends were here behind my house, combing the hills for me, um, for, for days. Okay. And, and we exhausted the area. It's, it's like, she just grew wings and just flew away just the same way that she just showed up on my yard out of nowhere one day. She kind of just disappeared the same way. Wow. But, you could write a book on that one. That, that, that story will sell right there. I really could. And she was just an, a phenomenal dog and, and uh, it was a heartbreak to lose her. So that, to bring me to where you were originally asked about, I got the new dog, Mabel after two weeks of just silence here in the house and, and no pitter patter of the feet right, of the right. dog. Um, I had to go out and, and get another little buddy. So when I got Mabel, she was about two months old at the time. So okay. now she's about four or five months old. And what kind and of dog is Mabel? She's a chocolate cocker spaniel that loves to pee in the house. <laughs> <laughs> loves I, it. Oh my goodness. So, so how are you dog training? How are you potty training this dog? Well, the, the, my vet has me on a schedule of taking her out every 20 to 30 minutes. Okay. Uh, getting her into a routine. Cause I started off 
with the potty pads, but uh, he said, I'm just training her to go inside the house. Now, do you Get include with- that in your billings? This is a, a, a show for lawyers. At least a lot of lawyers listen uh, every 20 <laughs> minutes. That sounds like an awful lot of billable hours. Well, fortunately, because it is kind of a gruesome schedule, but when you work from home um, and you're in front of the computer all day and you have hearings every 30 minutes or so, you have that five-minute break or 10 minutes to go outside. <laughs> so it actually, uh, it's been nice that I'm home and flexible enough with my schedule to uh, to concentrate on her potty training skills. But we're getting there. Baby steps. She'll, she'll go maybe two times a day now as opposed to – in. Wow. And yeah, uh, yeah they, we had a dog, of uh, the best dog I ever had. The smartest dog was Cinnamon, a golden retriever. And that dog was instantly potty trained once we put her oh. in her own crate. And because she was that smart. And once she realized she was in her crate, she would never, ever use the bathroom in the house again. Uh, but um, uh, then I got Black Lab. She was not near as smart. No, she's dumb. She's still, I think she's 14. She still has not figured it out. But nonetheless, oh. hey, I, I, I love following that story. Now, you off, so you off, so the reason why I'm keep bringing you on is because you have all these great free legal tips. No, <laughs> but maybe I should be bringing you on for your potty training tips as well. Before we jump into your great free legal tips, do you have any potty training tips? If someone was going to go out and buy a Cocker Spaniel tomorrow and you want to say, hey, let, let me give you a little, this is the secret to potty training. What would you tell them? So far, I would say stock up on the bounty paper towels okay. and Let's the hydrogen. Up. Just Yeah, I just give up and roll with it at this point. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm now, hoping that she's going to age up to she understands when I praise her with the treats. And when we go outside and she goes, you give her a treat immediately and you praise her. Yes, so okay. I keep waiting for that to kick in. Um, but uh, the only word that she knows and understands is treat. No doesn't work. Stop doesn't work. Come does not work. But treat and i have her immediate attention <laughs> wow they learn fast and they do not yeah. ever forget i know my yeah. two dogs they know what treat is they know what the smell of chicken is if i open up a, a bag from the kitchen that had that had cold chicken in it so i just open up that that ziploc bag of boom my Shih Tzu, <laughs> Caramel, is right on top of my feet. He knows there's chicken, and he gets his chicken's treat. So they're, they're yeah. very good. Hey, but you... Catch them without her immediately, you know, on me, shadow. <laughs> right, right, exactly. They're, they're right there. But you, the reason why we love having you on, uh, in addition to your, your wonderful stories, and I, I love your, your animals, but you have this collection of really wise... I mean, I don't think Solomon has anything on you. Uh, You are very wise when it comes to legal observations, and you've turned them into tips. And because you are such a charitable person, you are offering them for free. So before we get to your wonderful free legal tips, tell Mm -hmm. us how someone can find these for themselves. So, I mean, I know you're on Facebook. Is that the best place to find your free legal tips? That right now is the only place if, if you go to L. Scott Briscoe's free legal tips on okay. Facebook. Now, I, I don't know if this was current with the, the last podcast, but I have a publisher now and yes. uh, I have a contract and I have to have everything turned in for my book uh, to the publisher by August in the hopes of participating uh, with the debut at the uh, West Virginia Book Fair. Oh, Nice. Is there a West Virginia uh, Bar Association conference? Uh, yes, there is. And actually, that might be another opportunity. I have another friend that goes on the circuit on the CLEs. He, uh, he's an entertainer as well as a, an adoption attorney. Okay. And, but he's encouraged me to, to uh, join him on the road with – uh, my legal tips and some of his uh, seminars. That would sell. <laughs> that would work. Absolutely, that would. That is a brilliant idea. Uh, yeah. And so, uh, I cannot wait for the book to come out. And if it's if you owe this person these tips in August, are you looking at maybe a November release date before Christmas? Can I put this in my Christmas stockings for my sons? That is, that is if everything goes on schedule. Now here's here's where I, I stand now is, and maybe you or your listeners here can help me out. Is I, I have been looking for an illustrator uh, for the tips. Really, um, been on the search for a while now, and and I've had just, uh, very few submissions. But uh, that's I've got all the, the the writing is finished. Okay, so we're just 
at someone and I'm thinking and I'm open to any type of, of, of genre, but I'm, I'm thinking of like the style of, of mad magazine, uh, oh, yeah. that type of art to go with it. It could work uh, comic book art or now the, the publisher is interested in black and white line art. Keep it simple. Right. Um, but I'm I'm open to suggestions. So if anyone's interested, they can uh, reach out to me. Uh, any of you that have artistic skills and a great sense of humor and to translate that, uh, you can reach out to me through that Facebook page. Hey, put me on for ten orders. I, I want to be the first ten. Well, maybe after your um, uh, mom and dad. I don't know if they're still alive. I guess, <laughs> but nonetheless, yeah, hey, out there. Out okay, there. yeah. Uh, <laughs> put me for the next ten. I want ten copies. And uh, so, if you're a friend or a close family, or a family or a close friend, you know what you're going to get for Christmas this next year. No surprise. Free legal tips from. Scott Briscoe. All right, well, let's go ahead and do some teasers here then, because you, there are stories behind these tips, and so I want to just go over some of these tips and have you talk about maybe what inspired you to come up with this very, very wise tip. All right, here you go. Start with the first one here. Free legal tip of the day, number 82. Does that mean anything to you? Do you know them by number, or do I, I I probably should go more? I have not committed the numbers to memory. Yet. Okay, all right, that'll, that'll come second. After convincing the judge to release you from jail while you've clutched your Bible and oh. passionately persuaded him that you found Jesus in Pod A, please <laughs> refrain from walking out of the courtroom and slapping said Bible in the bailiff's hand on your way out, stating, "Here, I don't need this anymore." So now I'm going to give you my theological bent on this in just a bit. But what inspires you to come up with this tip? Oh, this is a great one, and actually, it brings up another related tip to my. And this was about well, twenty years ago, roughly, uh, and I was still a much younger attorney. Okay, and uh, started when I was appointed to represent uh, uh, a defendant by the name of Pam, and Pam was originally charged with uh, possession uh, with the intent to deliver, okay. and the alleged drug of choice was a bag of marijuana that was found in the back seat of her car. And Pam's defense in that case was the uh, go-to. It must have been that hitchhiker that I picked up on the way here, and that I dropped off, okay. and he must have left it in the back seat. Uh, <laughs> so that was the defense that she gave, and that's what I rolled with. But the the, the judge didn't buy it. So okay. ultimately, a little bit of time on that. So while she's in there doing time, she said that she found religion. Okay. And that's when uh, it came time for sentencing. And uh, Pam got up there in front of the judge, and she gave the most impassioned hellfire and brimstone <laughs> sermon. And she had found Jesus. He was at the uh, Holden Regional Jail, uh, Pod A, Cell 2. Oh, and, good to know uh, where. She learned to, to live the right life and uh, – that if he released her, that she was going to go out and be a voice for the Lord and uh, that she was going to change society. And uh, almost tears just rolling down her cheek. And I was I was standing there because I was impressed. You were impressed. I was impressed. She was very articulate in her, in her sermon um, for an early release. And uh, so, and the judge bought it because uh, she, she was very eloquent and articulate in her, in her passion there. And, uh, he grants her the, the probation that she's asking for. So I'm walking out of the courtroom with her so that she can be unshackled and change clothes. And she has the Bible there in her hands that she had clutched to her, her <laughs> chest so passionately as she gave this sermon. Well, as we're walking out of the courtroom and the bailiff is there uh, escorting us out of the doorway, she takes that Bible and she just slaps it on his chest, his chest. And says, well, here you go. I don't need that anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> so famous last words. Wow. That Bible, that Bible ended up back on the bench. The bailiff, of course, goes back to the judge and says, well, here's here's how that ended, judge. And no. Bailiff, yeah. So the judge, then circuit judge, Slagle, kept the uh, the Bible on that bench. And he even wrote in it, um, in the, the there's an inscription in the beginning, um, to Judge Slagle from Pam. Uh, <laughs> that day. So flash forward to maybe 10 years later, guess who gets picked up again? No. <laughs> Pam got picked up again. And uh, 
I was not her court appointed attorney this time, but I happened to be there in the courtroom when the next judge happened to comment. By the way, are you the same Pam that's in this box <laughs> here that's on my bench? <laughs> are you kidding me? No, I'm not making wow. any of any of this up. That so, is a great story. So, yeah, she ended up right back in front of the, the different circuit judge, but the Bible that she had so uh, loosely let go of um, came back to bite her in the butt again later. So yeah, don't yeah, don't fake it. Just keep keep on walking out the door. Keep the Bible and don't let the bailiff know anything different. It would have probably helped her out maybe to read it. Though I do think Jesus would have picked up that hitchhiker just based upon my theological training. I know he liked to hang out in bars and things like that. Uh, so I mean, he probably would have picked up the hitchhiker. That defense might have worked. I, I'm not sure on that one. All right. Well, he did the store with the thieves and the hookers, is my understanding. Exactly. So that's not a bad, but, but you know, uh, just don't give the Bible back. I guess that's your point there. Take the Bible, keep it, keep it maybe, with you. Maybe read it a second time. I don't know. Hold it on for the next time, maybe. That's right. That's right. All right. <laughs> Free legal tip of the day, number 96. Uh, so bearing your chest to your husband is fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to sneak him a flash at his criminal hearing because he's not seen them in a while is not. <laughs> so please tell me. First of all, is this a same sex relationship? No, this was okay. not. <laughs> all right. I mean, recover that, covering that one. Now go ahead and tell your story. Yes. So this was actually a male defendant and a female wife. Okay. Unfortunately, out of all the tips to not be there in the courtroom for this one, I missed. But okay. my friend Jennifer Anderson, the prosecutor, uh, was um, lucky enough to be there to witness it and, and to share it with me right afterwards. <laughs> the, uh, it was a day of uh, criminal hearings. And there were roughly a dozen inmates that had to be uh, ushered in to the courtroom for hearings. And for security purposes, the bailiff just has them all sit in the jury box. So they're all in one little contained area, and he can keep an eye on everyone. So that's that's where they are. Well, this lady comes in, and she got as close as she could in the, the pews uh, there that sit in front of the jury box to where she was right in front of, uh, we'll say, her old man. This is how okay. they refer to You got your old lady, and you got your old man. So she plopped down right in the, the front row in front of her old man and the other inmates. And uh, Jennifer uh, happened to notice that she kind of had an odd look on her face, was kind of staring intently at her husband. And uh, sure enough, when no one she thought was looking, uh, the lady whips up her shirt real quick, no bra on, <laughs> bears her bare chest right there in the courtroom. And there's the court reporter, the bailiff, the judge, people, you know, in the courtroom. And she didn't think anybody would notice that. <laughs> And so that was you know, Jennifer noticed it, and then she did it, I think, two or three more times um, when the bailiff also realized what was going on. <laughs> so, wow. Um, and, and when were video cameras put in the courtroom? Probably soon thereafter? Um, you know what? There were cameras in the courtroom, but I'm thinking it was not worth it because if it was, she would have gotten out of jail, but instead she ended up in the holding cell. <laughs> I see. Okay. All right. A very interesting tip. Good to know. You know, if I'm ever yeah. in jail there, no flashing going on. All right. Uh, free legal tip of the day, number 41. When the judge asks you who the father of your child is, a pill made me pregnant is neither a credible nor acceptable response. Sex said, look into it. So what is the backstory on that one? Uh, on this one, we had um, a girl who, uh, I won't say she was lower functioning, but she was borderline. And she had a slightly higher functioning, older old man who took care of her. And uh, when the case got filed and, and I first was appointed to it, uh, she claimed to not know that she was pregnant and that she believed that uh, the old man had slipped her a pill. And the old man had claimed, well, I didn't think she could get pregnant. And I asked, well, why did you think that? He said, well, I asked people around town, and they said, well, nope, she can't get pregnant. Um, kind of the Facebook thing, have you read it or heard it in town that it must be true? Right, right. This was something a little bit more intimate that you think the two of them would have shared right, with right. Each about how the, the mechanics work in that situation. So. <laughs> She swears she didn't know she was pregnant, and then uh, when she gave birth, they were driving down the road in the, the pickup truck, 
and gave birth to my client right there uh, in the uh, floorboard of the truck. Okay. <laughs> That's how she found out she was definitely pregnant. Wow. So your yeah. your client was born in the, on the floorboard of a truck? On the floorboard of the, of the truck in the front. Yeah, they were just driving down the road, and all of a sudden she had some pains. And the next thing you know, she's got her, her drawers around her ankles, and there's a baby down there. I mean, this is a Hallmark special. What what a great story. I mean, if this that is probably the most redneck thing I think I've ever heard. Someone <laughs> being bored on the floor bed of a truck. But, hey, you have a very interesting practice, I, I guess. Stick with me, Joel. I'm sure I could shock you even more. <laughs> okay, hey, I ain't just going down through this list here. So I'm kind of curious as to what is the next item here. I did not compile this list. Brooke, uh, uh, you know, our, our marketing person, compiled this list. Uh, so I'm very curious to see what is next. All right, this is what's next free legal tip of the day number three it looks like uh though my eyes are not really focusing i think it's number three when telling the judge you need out of jail to donate a spare organ to your dying mother choose an organ you can spare such as a kidney your liver does not come in a pair and you will need it hey that is good to know so you only have one liver and you really can't donate now is this a medical tip or a legal tip well, it's more of a legal tip, and I'll tell you why. Um, when he did that, he obviously he had, he didn't run that by me. He just in open court decided to, to offer that up. Otherwise, I would have explained to him you only have one liver, so you can't donate the entire liver, or, or you'll die. Um, but when I posted that tip, um, it created a controversy. There's if you read the the comments following, because a lot of people noted, well, the liver regenerates. Oh, right. So that led to the splitting of hair as well was he's going to offer his whole liver or just a piece of his liver so that one kind of got away from itself but yeah it was it was great that he was in his mind thinking i'm sure i need to donate a kidney but um he just goes and judge I, i've got to get out my mama's real sick and i need to donate to her my liver <laughs> wow. Okay. Hey, that is good tip. Uh, not not a bad, uh, you know, t- words to live by as well. When you start donating certain body organs, body parts, whatever. But you can spare. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure you can spare them. All right. Hey, I got 10 fingers, 10 toes. Uh, you're good with those, but outside of them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, how about uh, free legal tip of the day? Number 15. If you see the lady on the left or the right, for that matter, Im- imagine two female police officers. <laughs> <laughs> On her day off, do not yeah. randomly interrupt her jog and offer her pills for sex, even mm-hmm. if you are 75 years old, especially, especially if you are 75, 75 years old. So <laughs> what, what happened here? Yeah. Yeah. So the trooper that you see there in that picture, uh, Trooper McClung, she was actually um, in her street clothes. She was just exercising, jogging through the neighborhood uh, on a wellness trail. And she came to a natural stop sign uh, where she had to stop on a corner to cross traffic. And there was a gentleman there on the street corner uh, on the path, 75-year-old, that propositioned her for, hey, do you want to trade some pills for sex? (laughs) (laughs) You want to trade pills? Uh, Made that (laughs) offer to a police officer. To Yeah, who was uh, uh, in street clothes. She was just jogging, but still she was not on duty, but at the time she's I guess it was mixed feelings because she's one annoyed that now she has to deal with it, but the two that she's glad that she's catching him in the act as well. Right, right. So she goes along with it and agrees, and he even agreed to meet her. Um, it was close to um, uh, a grade school, which makes it even better. Oh yeah, yes. So, so she goes. She shows up. She of course calls um, her fellow officers um, to be there and to be prepared um, because she's about to to meet for the hookup for the the sex and, and the drugs. Right, so, right. So, so I, I'm just curious here, 75 years of age and he is offering pills. What, what pills possibly did he think he could offer a younger lady? Uh, you would be amazed, Joel, how many cases I have where older men with, um, a large medicine cabinet are very popular with, um, certain young ladies. Really? Oh, did yeah. not know that. Oh, Joe, I, I have cases where, uh, a lot of cases where the young women seduce older men specifically uh, for their prescriptions, or I've had the young women who do that and then show up with their younger boyfriend to beat up the old man so that they can just empty out his medicine cabinet. Yeah. Wow. But in this case, um, there the, was no... 
uh, physical violence. This was legit. He wanted he wanted the the goods for the drugs. Yeah, <laughs> things that you learn. I, I'm learning every day on this podcast. I had no idea. All right, hey, this next one has, has caught my attention because I am a huge coffee drinker. As I'm hoping, there's a backstory on this one. <laughs> Give your cl- drunk client, or giving your drunk client lots of coffee just prior to his hearing, will only result in a wide awake drunk client in the courtroom. Well, what happened there? That's this was when I was right out of law school. This is an oldie but a goodie too. Uh, I was court appointed to a fellow by the name of Raven, and uh, Raven had a little bit of a, a drinking problem, and. Uh, he was picked up for public intox and a um, couple of, I think, obstructing charges. This was a long time ago. But nevertheless, I showed up there with Raven in court, and, and Raven came to court red-faced and bloodshot eyes. He just reeked uh, of liquor, and he was drunk. And so there we stand in magistrate court before the magistrate at the bench. And the magistrate, uh, Porter Snodgrass at the time, God bless his soul, um, he uh, knew Raven and, and knew that Raven was three sheets to the wind. Right, right. We, would, we couldn't do the hearing in the state that he was in. So the magistrate just looks at Raven and says, Now, Raven, I'm going to give you 24 hours. You're going to go home and you're going to come back here after drinking 24 cups of coffee. <laughs> You'll be sober for this hearing tomorrow. Okay. And Raven, without missing a beat, well, Porter, all you're going to have then is a wide awake drunk. <laughs> <laughs> to give him credit was true that he would have been a lot of fake drunk. So, that yeah. dang rule 3.3 that requires candor in the tribunal, at least your client yeah. was following that rule. Hey, he was being well, honest. This, no, no. Nope. another one where, another tip, uh, this is a fellow that was about to be committed for alcohol abuse and, uh, and using pills. And uh, they asked him on uh, – Direct examination. Isn't it true that you chased those pills with a pint of liquor? And the little old man sat there for just a few seconds and thought. And then he goes, No, it was two pints. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks for the tip. I appreciate that. Not oh. uh, two, right? You might make sure they, they get the full story there. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. Hey, what, what about this one here? This is uh, I sh- I'm hoping this one is a uh, uh, not a sad story, but free legal tip of the day number seventy five. There are many many things you can sell on Craigslist. Your baby is not one of those things. <laughs> well, this one was a public one. This was not one um, that I uh, saw or participated in myself. But this was an actual couple. That and, and I don't know if everyone knows what Craigslist is, but basically that's where you go to to sell merchandise or services. Right, you can uh, sell anything on Craigslist, apparently. Yes, but anything but um, a child. That's that's a little bit illegal. That's <laughs> off limits. Okay, good to know. <laughs> there is no se- okay. now. You say that, right? You say that, but I I got to kick back just a little bit because I actually have a case I talk about in my class where they kind of did. Uh, And so in my case, it happened in Topeka, Kansas. This lesbian couple wanted a child, and so they put an ad out on Craigslist seeking a sperm donor. And so when I first read that, I thought, where? I mean, apparently you can buy anything on Craigslist. You can even purchase a sperm donation. And someone found that ad, said, hey, I'm your guy. And so they did the procedure, whatever, and the person donated his semen, I guess, a sperm to the, this person, okay. and it worked. He was not shooting blank. They gave birth to a child, and uh, from that, now the ending of this story, the reason why I mentioned it in my class is this lesbian couple hit a rough patch in their relationship. They split up. The mother then had health issues and lost her job, and so she went to the Kansas Department of Children and Family seeking some support for her child. And of course, what did they want to know? They want to know who the father is. Exactly. Let's play more <laughs> poetry. Who's the baby's daddy? And so she said, well, I got an interesting story to tell you. Long story short, the, the person said it doesn't matter if it was on Craigslist. There was an NSA that was signed as well. No strings attached agreement. They said, we don't care. He still owes a bag of child support. There is a provision in the law how you can do this procedure and cut off parental rights, 
A, a Craigslist ad is probably not one of those procedures. <laughs> Don't be a cheapskate. Go go to a licensed physician or a fertility clinic and get it done that way. But that's that's that story. Kind of consistent yeah, with your great story. Great tip, right there, Joel. That's excellent. <laughs> so, hey, there you go. You know what? I'll put that in your free, in your new book. Okay. But all right, last one here because I'm reading it and I just I, it's caught my attention here. So I want you to unpack the story in its full detail, uh, <laughs> all of its glory. A free legal tip number one hundred and eleven, kind of like the, the that, that number. When facing indecent exposure charges for mooning someone while seven months pregnant, now that's in parentheses. Was that actually that actually happened while seven months pregnant? That actually, actually happened, yes. Okay, all right. I'm going to finish this in. Avoid wearing this shirt to your probable cause hearing or any hearing. The shirt says, just a girl. <laughs> I can't even read this. Just a girl who loves peckers with a chicken pattern. So please tell me what this is about. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know I've told you in the previous interviews how when I started this list and it, and it gained popularity, people rushed to give me the, 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 the facts, these stories, when they happen here in the system. I have uh, deputies, I have judges, magistrates, probation officers. As soon as these things happen, I get a phone call or I get a text, hey, come see me right now. Right, right. And on this one, this was magistrate uh, uh, Danny. Yeah, it was Danny was on duty. And uh, he called me, Scott, you have to come down here right now. I have to tell you what, what just happened. And everyone already left the courtroom, so I missed actually seeing the shirt itself but this was someone that actually had the law it was a woman that had the law called on her because she uh exposed herself moon someone and she was also seven months pregnant at the time just okay. to make it more and colorful and apparently she loves chickens because of the shirt that says just a girl who that loves was my thought it, it was it was my, just like my dog she loves chickens yeah, because there's even a silhouette of chickens on the shirt. But okay. a seven-month pregnant woman with her, her butt hanging out, uh, shining in the air with the pecker shirt on, it, it just does paint a very colorful um, image. <laughs> wow. I am I am going to apply to get a license there in West Virginia. I've got to practice law out there. You have a very interesting practice. Hey, Scott, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us these free legal tips. I am looking for this book. Uh, I've already placed my order. It's right here. Uh, it's on this um, podcast. So, uh, yeah, the um, uh, I want my autograph as well. I'm going to give them out for Christmas presents this year. Uh, hey, I'll be waiting for my three-timer jacket. <laughs> exactly. It, it is coming at any day now. Amazon is really, it might be there by now. And once we off this podcast, go check the front door. It might be there. Amazon you is that quick. Rock star. <laughs> that's right that's right all right thank you so much and have a great week hey you too man thank you for listening to today's podcast if you enjoyed this podcast please give us a five star review we need your love to help us continue highlighting the funnier side of the law i want to give a special shout out to our vice president of operations wendy oster without whom this entire operation would be a mess Sean Wynn and 15.5 Features for making me sound way better than I actually do, Brooke Bolin for spreading the good word about us, and Ryan Kuhn and Paul Kuhn of Triplicity Marketing for our technical and computer support. <laughs>